Oh, I really thought mom had saved a lot of money, I said. Didn't I tell you? Just kick her out already. Why keep a jobless burden here? I have been living with my son and his wife for four months, and they had drained my savings. They treated me like a servant. I had enough, so I left quietly. Then my son called me. Mom, what's going on? Eric sounded frantic on the phone. Around that time, something I did had made headlines across the Canada. I'm Olivia, and I am 65 years old. I have been living in Italy for several years, but my health got worse, so I came back to the States. My old apartment was gone, so I reached out to my son and his wife to see if I could stay with them for a while. Eric, my only son, is 38 and works in an office. He and his wife Helen don't have kids and seem to live quietly. We lost touch while I was away, but I decided to reconnect. Eric seemed glad to hear from me. I explained my situation and asked if I could stay for a while. Eric reluctantly agreed. It was awkward to impose on them, but the joy of seeing my family again overcame my hesitations. With a mix of nervousness and happiness, I took a taxi from the airport to their house. When I arrived, Eric and Helen greeted me at the entrance. Eric looked happy, but Helen was visibly unhappy. I planned to stay for a few months, and my belongings would be delivered later. I dropped off my carry-on bag and went to the living room. We chatted about our daily lives and jobs, as well as my recent life in Italy. When Eric asked why I had moved to Italy, I just said, I'm getting old and wanted to enjoy the Italian countryside. Eric laughed, but Helen remained unhappy. Then we discussed my health issues. I've been having severe dizziness and was told it might be Meniere's disease. When a seizure occurs, people may be unable to stand because their surroundings are spinning and they may feel nauseous. I feel insecure living alone, so I wanted to stay with them until my condition stabilizes. I went back to the entrance to grab my things for my carry-on. As I was organizing my stuff in the hallway, I overheard Eric and Helen talking. Eric, are you serious about letting Olivia stay? I don't want to live with an old woman. Come on, she's my mom. You also work part-time, so you won't always be around. Yeah, but what about our days off? How long is she planning to stay? I want her gone. Don't talk like that. Mom will leave eventually. We can discuss finances tomorrow. Just keep it down, she might hear you. She can't hear us. Old age doesn't bring sharp ears for insults. There I was, eavesdropping on their conversation in the cold hallway. I felt bad for imposing on Eric and his wife so suddenly. I'm sure it's a big inconvenience for them, but I'm really happy to be spending time with Eric and his wife after all these years apart. When Eric was young, I raised him as a single mom after losing my husband. We didn't have much and Eric had his share of hardships dealing with illness and all. This isn't making up for that, but I wanted to come here to share my apologies and gratitude. That's why I came to this house. It's a shame I'm not welcomed, but they've got their own lives to live. I went to the guest room they gave me, trying to calm my anxious heart. The next morning, Eric left for work, and it was just Helen and me. While I was doing some crafting in the living room, Helen stood before me. Hey Olivia, can you not make such a mess? I looked around and noticed fabric scraps and threads scattered about. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll clean it up. Do you know what this is? I showed her the small pouch I was sewing. It had a little green turtle design on it. This is a turtle pouch. I love turtles, so I make little turtle-themed crafts. It even has a zipper on its shell too. That's nice, but Olivia, you can't just hang around here all day. Helen cut me off, clearly uninterested. At least go somewhere else when I'm off from my part-time job. You're in the way. But I get dizzy if I go outside too much. I'll drive you to the nearby community center to stay there during the day. I have things to do at home, Helen said firmly. Also, help with the chores while you're here. It's the least you can do since we're letting you stay. Don't do crafts, do some cleaning and laundry. I was stunned. I finally said, all right then, and slowly got up. 
From then on, I ended up doing all the housework. Even though I was dizzy and sore, I took on the chores. Helen and Eric treated me like a housekeeper. Helen seemed addicted to social media, always on her phone. It looked like she hadn't been keeping up with the housework before I came. That night, Eric came home and asked, Mom, did you bring your bank card? He smiled as he talked to me. I don't mind you living with us, but life costs money. Could you chip in? I looked at Eric over my reading glasses, nodded, and stood up. I pulled the bank card from my handmade pouch and handed it to him. He checked it quickly, and his face tightened. Wait, Mom, is this all you have saved? Any other accounts? That's all I have. I don't need much at my age. No chronic illnesses or anything, I said, smiling. As the conversation continued, Eric's expression darkened. Man, this is not enough money, not even $20,000. You said you were living large abroad, so I assumed. Eric kept pestering me, asking if I had any more money. When I said no, he sighed and slumped his shoulders. Fine, I'll hang on to this cash for now. I'm doing you a favor letting you live here, so this is the least you could do. After getting my account password, Eric grabbed my bank and debit cards and left the room. That night, lying in bed, I could hear Eric through the wall that separated our rooms. Oh, this is a letdown. I totally thought mom was loaded. Our household is actually in the red. Shouldn't have said she could stay. See, I told you, kick her out already. That jobless moocher brings us no benefits whatsoever. The two of them seemed confident I couldn't hear, talking freely in the next room. Or maybe they wanted me to hear them. In my cold bed, I held back tears of loneliness and sorrow. The next day, Helen had a day off, so she drove me to the local community center. I opened my cargo bag to continue my handiwork in the lounge area, but realized I had left the essential fabric at home. I hesitated but couldn't ask Helen to go back and get it. Fortunately, my dizziness was under control today. I knew this area, so I decided to take a walk home to get the fabric. Finally arriving, I glanced through the veranda into the house. Helen and an unfamiliar man were there. At first, I thought he was a visitor, but they seemed intimately close. I hesitated outside for a while, then turned back without entering the house. So that's why they wanted me out, so I wouldn't interrupt the affair. Back at the community center, I kept thinking about Helen and that man and decided to call someone for advice. From then on, I avoided bringing up the man and continued interacting with Eric and his wife. However, whenever I left the house, I would conspicuously place a red turtle pouch at the edge of the living room side table. Four months had passed since I started staying with Eric's family. By this point, I had essentially become the household maid. When I was at home, I had to do endless chores, and when Helen was home, I was relegated to the community center. My savings had mostly been drained by Eric, a man with a gambling addiction who spent most of his free time on lotteries and slots. It seemed his fixation on money stemmed from the financial hardships he suffered as a child. I initially tried to intervene, but eventually gave up, because mentioning it always enraged him. Four months in, and I couldn't take it anymore. One night before a long weekend, I decided to bring up something I'd been considering. Eric Helen, thank you for letting me stay with you. Eric, I know I made things hard for you when you were young by not having much money. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused, but I'm grateful. I pulled out a homemade turtle pouch from the table. It was green with a zipper on the shell. This is a token of my gratitude to both of you. I hope you'll accept it. Contrary to my expectations, neither Eric nor Helen showed any interest in my handmade pouch. Mom, enough of that. Are we really out of money? Think about the Italian account or something. Eric, I told you we are out of money. Look, I worked really hard on this. Can you just take it as a token of my love? Remember how happy you were when you were little, and I would fill the shell with candy and some pocket money. Eric started to get increasingly irritated. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm not happy receiving something like this. 
Olivia, how much longer are you planning to mooch off us? Honestly, it's annoying. Eric and his wife gave me a cold look. Desperate, I asked Eric, do you remember Brian? He helped us out in that old apartment we lived in. What? I don't remember. Stop bringing up old stories. Are we done? Eric said, looking annoyed. I was stunned into silence. I clenched the turtle pouch in my hand and felt the texture of the paper inside. The next day, Eric and his wife went on vacation, leaving me behind. After our conversation yesterday, I decided to leave the house. I quickly packed my bags and arranged to send them to my home in Italy. I also made sure to put the red turtle pouch into my carry-on bag. I left a simple note of thanks and goodbye on the table and left the house where I'd been staying for four months. After that, I didn't return home immediately. Instead, I stayed in a K hotel for a while. I had things to do, and I thought Eric and his wife would contact me eventually. Sure enough, about three weeks later, Eric called. Mom, what's going on with the turtle pouch? It's yours, isn't it? Eric yelled over the phone. Ah, you noticed? I said. I wasn't surprised when I saw the news on TV. The turtle-shaped pouch I had planned to give to Eric and his wife had a check for $2 million inside it. It was my way of saying thanks for all they had done and to apologize for any trouble I caused when I was younger. Some might find it shallow to atone with money, but I had dreamed of the day I could give it to them, saving up bit by bit over 39 years. I had found out Eric was in debt. He had tried to pay off gambling debts with more gambling, only to sink deeper. Even with a steady job, he was struggling. I wanted him to clear his debts and live peacefully, but they refused my gesture. They had forgotten the kindness they once showed me. So, I decided to divide the million-dollar check into smaller sums and donate it to charities and welfare organizations across Canadian. I placed the donations in that handmade turtle pouch and sent it anonymously. The turtle pouch became a sensation, making headlines and trending on social media. Helen saw it on social media. Isn't that the turtle pouch mom made? So that means you were going to give us one filled with money too. Yes, exactly. That was my way of saying thank you and sorry. I had been crafting both the pouch and saving the money to give to you. Well, you could have said that. We would have taken it if you didn't want my feelings, then you don't need my money either. Eric was yelling on the phone, completely unhinged. It's my money. How dare you deceive me? Give it back. I couldn't listen anymore and pulled the phone away from my ear. After a moment, I spoke. All right, calm down. You're giving me a headache. There's one more turtle, and if you really want it, it's yours. Eric finally settled down and reiterated his desire for the turtle. We agreed to meet later at a cafe. On that day, I took the last red turtle in an envelope to our meeting spot. Eric and his wife were already there and demanded the money before I even sat down. When I silently pulled out the red turtle, Eric snatched it immediately and unzipped its shell. Inside was not a check but a small electronic device. What the heck is this? Eric said, confused. He fiddled with the device and found a tiny button. He pressed it, and a voice began to play. Helen, standing next to Eric, immediately changed color. It was Helen's voice talking warmly with another man that wasn't Eric. What is this? Why? What's happening? Helen seemed to finally realize it was a recording of her having an affair. She tried to snatch the recorder from Eric's hand, but Eric didn't let go. While they grappled, I opened the envelope I brought and laid out several pictures on the table. These were photos of Helen cheating with another man at home. Faced with irrefutable evidence, Helen was flustered and kept saying, Why? Why? Eric picked up the photos one by one, examining them intently. Since I came to your house, something seemed off. A friend told me I could hire someone to find out and even offered to cover the costs. What's your problem? Why would you do this? Well, you're my son's wife. It's sad to think family is deceiving each other. You'll understand when you're older. I guess fate brought me here to discover your infidelity. Helen, have you been lying to me all along? 
Since when? Eric, you've got your um secrets too. If you're blaming her for cheating, you need to fess up as well. What? I've never cheated. What about your debt? Eric fell silent, and now it was Helen's turn to speak. What about you wasting all your money on gambling? I only use the money I earn, and you have your part-time job, so you should have some money. Listening to their squabble, I sighed. This couple had somehow managed to keep it together until now. Neither of you has any money. Eric, you're $50,000 in debt. Helen, you've been giving all your earnings to your affair partner. I had the investigator check your finances too, I said. Both Eric and Helen were shocked and started shouting at each other. I was floored when I first heard the investigation results. This couple was on the brink of bankruptcy. Look, we can pay back the debt if we get mom's money. So give it to us now. I donated all the money. The only thing left is this red turtle figurine. You blew through my savings on gambling, remember? You're kidding me. All of it? Enraged, Eric lunged at me across the table. Other customers started to pay attention, and the staff hurried over. The two million dollars is mine. It was supposed to be mine. Give it back. Soon, the police had to be called to restrain Eric. After the police calmed him down, they kindly escorted me back to my hotel due to my concerns about Eric's aggressive behavior. A week later, Eric and Helen's relationship had deteriorated beyond repair due to the affair and debt. They got divorced. Eric, now single, got even more consumed with gambling and acquired more debt. He was caught trying to embezzle company funds. He avoided criminal charges but was fired. To make matters worse, his outburst at the cafe was captured on video and spread on social media, making it difficult for him to find another job. Unable to bear the shame, Eric cut off all contact and disappeared. After the divorce, Helen had no one to rely on and moved into an old public housing unit, living alone. Just before I could make a donation for the turtle rescue, my online post mocking my own turtle went viral. Helen started facing harassment and stalking, which eventually spread to her part-time job and got her fired. Even the man she was having an affair with grew tired of her and left. Now, without any income, she's living on temporary assistance for needy families. After that, I returned to my home in Italy. Once I finished unpacking in my apartment, I changed into a dress with practiced ease. As I was reviewing some work documents, I heard a noise at the entrance. It seemed Brian, my cohabitant, had returned home. Hey, Madam President, welcome back. How was your trip to Canadian after so long? Brian came over with a smile, setting down his coat and bags. Brian is 69 years old. He was a resident in the same apartment complex where my son Eric and I lived years ago. I was struggling with poverty, having lost my husband and caring for a young asthmatic Eric. We had no utilities and no one to turn to. I was desperate and considered ending it all. It was Brian and his wife, our upstairs neighbors, who saved us. They were our lifeline. Please call me Olivia. I'm back and look, I brought so many souvenirs. Wow, all my favorites. Thanks. I'll take some to the storytelling event at the community center tomorrow. Brian said, examining each of the piled-up souvenirs on the table, his face beaming. After we got back on our feet, Brian and his wife moved away for work. Years later, we bumped into each other in the city, and I began helping with a support program for the needy that Brian had founded. By then, Brian's wife had passed away, and we started working together as business and life partners. I've been leading the organization since Brian retired a few years ago. What started as a small operation by Brian and his wife has grown into a large-scale international organization over the past 32 years. Currently, we're focusing on supporting single moms in raising their children. We moved to Italy a few years ago to study their advanced support systems. Although we have become quite well-known in Italy, we're still not widely recognized in Canadian. I plan to expand our activities there soon and wanted to spend time with Eric and his family as just a mom, 
before they found out about my work. In the end, I couldn't get them to understand how I felt, but that's their choice. Even if it was for a brief moment, I was happy to spend time as a family. I am now 65 years old, but it's just 65. There's still much I want and need to do. I straightened my back in my dress and began thinking about my international speech for tomorrow.